Coach, uh, how much do the poker chips go up this week? Just your thoughts on Wisconsin. Well, uh, yeah, anytime you're in conference play, it uh, ramps up a little bit. Everything means a little bit more. Wisconsin's a very good team. You know, epitomizes everything um, that the Big Ten's all about. Really good coaching. Um, very sound. Uh, same thing, want to control the football. I, I think they have very good players. I think Graham Mertz is an excellent quarterback and uh, you know, multiple running backs. The offensive line is really good. Um, very good players on defense. So, um, you know, they're, they're always good. They're always well coached. They're always sound. And, uh, and they have very good talent. So this is going to be a big challenge. How well do you feel about your team right now going into this game, coming off the kind of performance we saw? And, and... Uh, kind of how I feel every week, which is like, Whatever happened the week before doesn't doesn't really matter. Uh, what matters is what you do this this week, and so we need a really good Tuesday practice and Wednesday practice, um, and then great preparation going into the game. Um, I mean, there were certainly things to grow on, certainly things to uh, be proud of in the last game, but uh, but a lot to improve on. So that's the whole thing is just you know growing, getting better, enhancing, but then also um, you know knowing that this this is um, everything's going to be harder when you deal with a conference opponent. Wisconsin easy to scout. They don't seem to <coughs> depart from who they are since Barry Alvarez was there. Well, they have an identity for sure, which um, is important for a program. Uh, but they're very well coached, and no, they're not easy to scout. They, they, um, you know, do a lot of different things, and they're good at them. And um, you know, I think one thing that you, you know about them is they're not going to deviate from from their plan. Um, but they're very good at it. It's been very successful. So why would they? Um, and you know, year in and year out, they have guys who look similar, play similar, and, and that's a tribute to the really good coaching that goes on. That's uh, you know, on, on their team. But you don't think they're because they maintain all those characteristics. They're not. No, I mean that's a good question. I, I just think um, that's what makes them good. You know, good teams have tendencies, um, but you know, so do we. And um, and then there's change-ups off of those things, but um, they're good at what they do, and um, and and they're 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 a lot more multiple than you think. You know, when you look at what they're doing on offense, they're throwing the ball a lot more than they ever have, uh, in my opinion. You know, uh, or at least in, in recent years, they're very good at that. Um, multiple up front in terms of the, the different uh, fronts we're seeing, the different uh, coverages that you get. So, um, you know, we got to be prepared because they're they're very intelligent. They can handle high levels of information and, and a good team. Going back to the offseason and certainly leading up to the season, it's just kind of a perfect game for you and your team in that regard, given the kind of style of game you're probably going to see on Saturday. Yeah, like I said, it's it's kind of the epitome of the Big Ten. You're going to get this when you get into conference play, and we knew that. That's that's why we talked about this going into the game. You know, we know um, their style of play, and and that's not uh, unique to Wisconsin. So uh, we have to be able to play in these styles of games. Real quickly about Dallin Hayden getting a chance to watch the film and see how he performed. What is your assessment of his performance? Uh, good. Um, you know, the number one thing is he took care of the ball, and he has to continue to do that moving forward. Because um, the more you do that, the more trust you build with your teammates. And that's the number one thing everybody's trying to do is show their teammates that they can be counted on. And that's the, that's the first thing. Um, I thought he had some really good lanes to run. I thought the offensive line did a good job. But, but he also hit some holes and created some explosive plays for us. I mean, I, I think that there's been plays on the corners, and um, you know we got to do a better job of making plays when it comes to the one-on-one -on -one situations. But um, you know, we have confidence in our guys that they'll make the plays. Um, and it's you know a couple a couple of them have been a little funky. You know, like the one in the Notre Dame game where he kind of bobbled it and caught it. Another one that was a little bit strange the other night. But still, at the end of the day, you know you got to do your job and make sure that your man doesn't catch the football. Cameron Martinez, he got his first start. Uh, I don't know how if there's going to be any issues with Tanner and those guys coming back, but, but how do you think Cam played and, and what do you see his future there? I uh, great out of champion, played well, uh, did some really good things. Uh, got a new opponent this week, so it'll be a big, bigger challenge for those guys. But I think that you can see that we do have some depth at that position, which is going to be important um, as we head into conference play. Hey, Coach, a little bit off topic is specifically about Wisconsin, but tonight Harry Miller is talking uh, publicly about his mental health journey and as an advocate for mental health. How important is that to see him sharing his journey with the community? Oh, I think it's unbelievable. Um, 
Harry actually asked me to, to speak at it and introduce him tonight. I wasn't able to do that because we have practice, but it was able to record a short video just introducing him and talking about uh, just the courage of a young man who's been, had an impact on so many people. And I was very fortunate enough to be the one that recruited him. Um, and we knew that Harry was special. We knew that he was going to have an impact on people. Never would you imagine it would be like this. And at such a young age, um, have such a great impact on people. And um, he's still in a battle. We know that, you know. And um, I'm proud of what he's done and what he's doing. Ryan, did you expect Cade to be this explosive in the passing game? I'm sure you expected a lot out of him as a blocker. Did you ex expect he looks very explosive out there? Yeah, uh, yes, we did. Um, and, and that's kind of what we want out of the tight end position. Um, and when he's had his opportunities, he's made plays so far. But um, you can see, you know, first off, that uh, he can block. Um, he's done a good job in protection. And now he's uh, showing what he can do on the perimeter um, and, and certainly in pass, um, you know, run pass conflicts. And, and he can run. I mean, he's an athletic player. Was a really good basketball player in high school. Uh, he's got good ball skills. Um, you know, when you're playing tight end, you have to do so many different job descriptions, and it's it's just a developmental position. But we saw the skill sets in him. Uh, personally, I saw it a few years ago. We had a lot of conversations. You know, he's kind of have a, a, he has a defensive mentality at sometimes, and I think his heart was a little bit on defense. But then he realized that his ceiling was at tight end. And to his credit, you know, he put his faith in in us that we were going to try to do everything we could to develop him. No, no guarantees, but. Um, so far, so good there, and he's got to keep building on it because he can be a weapon for us. I know you don't like talking about injuries, but what can you tell us about Travion? Do you expect he'll play this week? Yeah, yep. Uh, same thing with him. You know, it was uh, just a short-term thing that we're expected to have him for Saturday. Yeah. Third row left, Dan Hope, Eleven Warriors. Ryan, you, you talked on Saturday about the offensive staff coming up with different packages for the offense. Kind of what's that process like between you and Kevin and all the other experienced coaches you have on the staff? Yeah, it's, it's right in that room there. There's all kinds of um, – um, well, all over the walls, it's just all the, this stuff here where you can draw over the walls. There's probably no open space. Just a bunch of people coming up with ideas. And, um, you know, when you're in that room, you know, there can't be any egos. You, know, you got to try to just throw out ideas. And ultimately, you know, Kevin and I make the final decisions. But, you know, Brian Hartline has, you know, tremendous ideas. And, and Justin Fry has really good ideas. And same thing with Tony and, and, uh, and Corey. I mean, and we have a good group in there. And so, when you have enough trust in that room where you can throw out ideas and, and not feel like maybe your idea didn't get put up there and you get, um, you know, your feelings hurt a little bit, there's, there's none of that that goes on in there. Guys just throw out ideas and the best idea wins. And um, so, but making sure that you have um, enough opportunity to practice those and get good at them too, because you can get crazy on that end too. You have to figure out what your players can know. And it ultimately comes down to those guys, you know. And and I think the the thing for for us with CJ and some of the older guys, uh, more veteran guys on offense, is we're getting some decent feedback on, uh, you know, the volume of plays, what plays they like, make sense. And anytime you get that type of feedback back from your players during the game week, that certainly helps us come up with a game plan going into Saturdays. What has Justin brought to that process, being a new coach? Very intelligent, um, really sees it from a wider lens than just the offensive line. Um, he's played in multiple schemes, so um, you know he has a good background in that area and uh, you know has a lot of ideas, and that's great. Um, but I think at the end of the day, it comes down to what can you actually install and see on the film on Saturday. And that's, to me, where so far there's been progress made and uh, a long way to go, but, but we're, we're, we're moving the needle there. Kind of on, on the same topic a little bit, but when you're facing someone like Jim Leonard, uh, the defensive mm -hmm. coordinator with his um, you know, resume, I suppose, like how much does that play into how you approach a game as a play caller? And on, on Saturday, um, as you're making decisions, are you thinking about the tendencies of that other guy across the way, or is it all just about your team? No, it's, it's a great question. I, I got a lot of respect for Jim Leonard. I always have, you know, going, going up against him, for, you know, for a couple times here, and uh, his defenses are always the some of the best in the country. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a big challenge for us. But at the end of the day, it doesn't have anything to do with the coaches. It comes down to the players. You know, what, what do the players know? What can the players do? And, um, you know, as much as sometimes it seems like, you know, matching wits between coordinators, sure, that, that comes into play. But at the end of the day, it's what do your players know? What can they execute on the field? You talked um, after the game, and I think you said it during the week last week, about how physical practice was last week. Was that – Something that just happened organically? Was it something that you and the staff were trying to instill last week? I mean, it's always an emphasis for us, but um, we know that that has to be a big part of our game. And um, 
So, you know, it's something we're emphasizing for sure, but the players responded, and um, it was what it was. I mean, if it's if it's a good week of practice, you got to call for what it is. If it's not a good week of practice, you got to call for what it is, and typically that has an effect on the game on Saturday. So um, I think I mentioned this before. I get more anxious anxious and worked up on Tuesday, Wednesday than I do on Saturday because the work and preparation that needs to be done here in the next 48 hours is so important to how well you play on Saturday. Because if you've seen it on film and you've physically done it, it's just a matter of being a pet of excellence. If you haven't done that, then now you're just kind of you know, hoping that it works out that way on Saturdays. And so that's why this is so important to do a great job on Tuesday and Wednesday. Last week you said Jordan Hancock sounded like he might be close to playing, but then he was inactive. Where, yeah. Where's his status right now? You know, that's it's it's been a while now since he's practiced for us, and uh, we still think that you know he, he's close, but he, but he's not where he needs to be just yet to get on the field. Four through middle, Pat Murphy, twenty four seven Sports. Ryan, you guys started the season with Notre Dame. You opened Big Ten with Wisconsin. Do you like getting these challenges? <laughs> Or I guess, what are your thoughts on getting this challenge out of the way? Early? I don't know. Uh, you know, we, we play nine conference games, so those are always going to be hard. And then when you add uh, Notre Dame in there, there's ten. So, you know, ten out of the twelve are going to be this way. It's just kind of the way it goes. So that's where the competitive excellent conversation comes into play. And you got to be ready to go from the jump, and you got to play well the whole season. So, um, you know, it's something that we knew going into the season, and um, it is what it is, and this is what we got to do. Cross division games when maybe you don't see Wisconsin or other teams that you have on your schedule each year as often. Right. How much does that change what you guys have to do preparation wise, film? And yeah, uh, you know we have played them, so um, it's not like we haven't seen them at all. You know, some teams like maybe you don't see for like three or four years, um, maybe longer. But um, you know, we we have played Wisconsin. We played them twice that one year, and certainly. Um, keep an eye on them, and then and then there's also the crossover games that you see on film on a week to week basis. So, um, but but it is a little bit different because it's not like you play them every year. Um, so, you know, it's the same for both sides. It's just who can handle it better. Ryan, after the game, Kevin was sort of talking about Mayan and Dow and having this one cut style and committing to it and going getting their pads vertical. Have you all felt that Trey has been at that same level with that or maybe trying to do too much at times? How have you felt when he's when he's been out there on Saturday, obviously? Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought he, you know, even in, in the, the few reps that he had early in the game, I thought he was running hard. And uh, I thought in the Notre Dame game he ran hard, you know, uh, in the four-minute drill especially. So I think that whole room is getting a mentality of running hard and taking some pride in that. And that goes – you know, with the mentality of the offensive line and the tight ends and kind of everybody on offense kind of want that edge about him. So um, I think he's done his part so far, and I know that all, all of those guys want to run hard and be physical. Just thinking back to, like, J.K. admitted in the 18 that he struggled with that and was trying to hit home runs, and that was that sophomore year after a good freshman year. I didn't know if there were parallels to that, if that's something that elite running backs, you know, think they can do it every time and, and want to do it every time or if they have to get through that or – or what that process is like? No, oh, um, I, I think it's a good point. It's something that we kind of learned in JK's second year, you know, is that you don't want to get anybody dinged up. But uh, they have to learn to play on contact, and they have to learn to run through things. And it's something that we've talked to Trey about a, long, a, a bunch. And uh, I think we've been all over it. I think Tony's been all over it. And um, and I think he's run that way so far this year. I haven't seen anything other than that. So, uh, But it's something we always keep an eye on. Ryan, prior to uh, this past game, when was the last time you called a fullback dive? Uh, um, I think I ran a fullback dive when I was in college, but I don't think we've called a fullback dive. <laughs> That's the first time you've ever called one as a play caller? Uh, yes. Yeah. Going back to the question about the coaches who put stuff in and the ideas, whose idea was the eye form? And, and how much has that been related to your call for toughness? Yeah, I, I think we have the right people in place to get into some of those formations now. I think you look at the tight ends. We actually had Josh Fryers, our extra tight end in the game, uh, who's very athletic. And and then you have, you know, Cade and G and Joe and uh, Mitch. Um, you know, so you have some, some guys who can get into those sets, which is, gives us a little bit of flexibility there. Um, you know, Kevin has a background with eye formation. Um, when Justin and I were together at Boston College, you know, our two-minute drill was, you know, power to the right, you know. So um, we threw the ball like about, f you know, six times a game. Uh, so, you know, everybody in that room has, you know, background in that style of play. And 
And there's a place for it when you have those styles of guys in your room and the versatility helps you. And, um, and it's something we're trying to build on. Is it a challenge to the players as well? I think they like it, right? I, I think that they, they, it's just a different feel when you're under center and you're coming at people as opposed to being in the gun. And um, I think when you're just one way, then um, – the defenses do a great job now. I mean, they're really good of kind of teeing off on you. So when you can change things up a little bit, I think it uh, gives a little bit of diversity to your offense. Uh, deep center, uh, Jeremy Birmingham. Riles. Um, when it comes to recruiting stuff, do you guys use rankings nationally as more of a starting point or a comparison point for what your personal evaluations are? And how hard is it to sort of pull away from – the lure of chasing those on the trail? Well, we're definitely aware of it. Um, we have our own evaluations, as you know, and um, you know, we kind of rank our guys and go through, and then uh, every once in a while we'll say, you know, what, what, what do they rank nationally on the, some of the publications? Uh, just to get an idea, typically the higher-rated guys are a little bit harder to get, um, and that's just the way it is. doesn't mean that maybe um, they're the right fit for us or our, our evaluation is in line with what maybe that – that ranking is, um, and so we try to find the right fit for us. Um, and you know, it's it's pretty close. You know, the guys who um, are ranked high are usually really good football players. That's you know, and maybe there's a couple that that aren't. So yeah, I mean, when there's somebody out there that we evaluate very highly, that's high on our list, that is highly recruited, we're competitive. We want to go get them. Quick pivot away from that. With a guy like G, when and you guys have seen as a coaching staff just the last couple of years, he's had a lot of. Difficulty getting himself physically ready, the changing positions, that kind of stuff. There's been some, you know, just difficult times that he's dealt with personally. How rewarding is it for you guys to see him make that turn? But then, do you feel an obligation to make sure that he gets the ball? I mean, it seems like you tried to hit him a few times on Saturday. Night. Definitely, um, I, you know, thought he deserved it in that game. I tried. It didn't quite work out the way that we thought it would work out a couple times. But that that's just the way it goes. Um, you know, and Cade and Mitch were like that early in the season, and then it kind of, you know, things have, have worked out a little better recently. But, you know, you can't always um, set it up that way. You know, the coverage is going to dictate where the ball goes. Um, but G in particular, everyone has their own journey. I'm certainly pretty sure that G didn't think that his journey would go like this when he came to Ohio State. Uh, but to G's credit, uh, he has worked every day. He's put his head down. He's shown toughness. Um, and he's got a chance to be a really good football player because he just keeps putting one foot in front of the other. And you can see, um, you know, in the Arkansas State game, he came in there and they, they saw his, him as a receiver. You can tell by the way that they played their front. He lined up as a tight end, went right down the field and ran the ball. And, and that's important to have, a, um, you know, an athletic, physical tight end like that. So, um, yeah, we're going to keep building that. And, you know, there's no guarantees because you just never know how things are going to shake out in a game plan or how it works. But... Uh, he is going to be an asset for us on offense this year and moving forward. And it has everything to do with how he just keeps coming, showing up every day and working. And so I'm proud of what he's done. All right, Adam King, WBNS. You guys scored 11 touchdowns last week. When you look at a team like Wisconsin that can take the air out of the ball, how hard is it to keep an offense in rhythm like you guys were against Toledo? It's definitely hard. Um, you know, that's that's where Wisconsin's always been really good over the years, just doing that. So. We've got to do a great job of, um, you know, understanding how they're trying to attack us and, and you know, win the time of possession, be physical, get off the field on third down. Kind of a pivot question here. You guys are now getting ready for your fourth, fourth home game of five straight. How much is not having to worry about going on the road and all of that logistically and preparing your team for that allowed you to just focus in on these games? Uh, yeah, I, I hadn't quite thought about it until maybe uh, driving in uh, this morning was that, uh, we haven't had to worry about any of that stuff, you know. And, um, yeah, I guess it's definitely a positive, um, just getting into a rhythm of things. But uh, at some point, we're going to have to go play on the road. We know that. And, um, you know, we'll make those adjustments because, you know, it, it's just inevitable. you got to go on the road and go win some games. But right now, um, like you said, we've gotten a little bit of routine here. So hopefully that it can be an advantage for us. Front row middle, Joey Coffin, Columbus Dispatch. Ryan, on the... The, th the first touchdown that CJ threw to, to Julian in the game where he, he rolls out of the pocket and is buying time and waits and that play develops, how, how much more comfortable is CJ throwing when, when, when uh, like, out of the pocket, out of structure um, in, in a play like that to happen? Well, I think you, you can see the work that he's done in the offseason just with his body, his movement, quickness, speed, strength. 
I think he showed a couple things in this past game. You know, he scrambled um, at one point and got us the third and manageable. Um, he uh, pulled the ball on a, on a run. We picked up you know, about four or five yards, and then you saw a couple more extended plays where he's breaking the pocket and looking downfield. And um, and so I think you know, I think in, on that drive he had one to Cade, and then he had one to Julian for the touchdown. So um, and he can do it left, he can do it right. You know, he's he's been doing a nice job of that. So. Um, anytime you can extend plays and allow your receivers more time to get open, it's an advantage, and he's shown that he can do that. Is that a primarily a physical development? Is it mental where you're just comfortable back there? What, where, does, where does that largely open? Yeah, I think it's both. I think you have to have the, the, the confidence phys- physically to be able to extend and, and get get away from the, the rush, but also just the speed of the game and understanding where the bodies are. You know, I think that there's a feel. You don't look at the rush. You feel the rush, and... There's uh, an art to find in the escape hatch, and um, he's shown that he can do that. About a second row left, Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. Uh, right. You spent a lot of time in the spring emphasizing the need to build depth in that tight end room. Yeah. Uh, about what point in fall camp did you feel like you accomplished that to the point where you run an eye formation and stuff on one of those 12 first? Uh, I, I probably – Probably midway through preseason, just seeing how those guys are and that we can count on them. You know, it's one thing to, to go through the off season. It's another thing to actually get on the field and see them do it. And then they start to put together a body of work. And um, like everything else, every day we're out there, we're trying to build trust in the guys around us, the coaches, players. And, and, and those, those guys have done that. They've shown up every day. They've made plays. They've blocked, you know. And again, those, those tight ends, you know, they have to go block a seven technique. Then they have to, you know, against, you know, uh, JTT or Zach Harrison or wh- whoever they're blocking, right? Then the next play, they have to pick up a blitz of Tommy Eichenberg, and then the next one, they got to go get open against a safety or a corner on the perimeter. You know, that's that that does those, those are not easy to do, and and so it takes time to develop those skills. But th- but they've made progress, and um, we've made progress there. Still, again, we're building on it, but I think there's been a lot of positive there. Okay. Obviously, proven he can be a weapon for you in the passing game, but so did Jimmy Rucker, so did Saints, so, so did Luke Farrell. Is- him being maybe more involved at this point, a reflection on his development, or maybe CJ's development, maybe getting to you know, other regions. Yeah, maybe maybe a, a combination of everything, you know, whatever that is. But um, you know, give Kate give Kate credit when he's had a chance to make plays, he's made them. Uh, right next door, Stephen Hellwagen, twenty four seven sports. Yeah, the last time you guys played Wisconsin <coughs> in twenty nineteen, you were behind twenty one to seven at halftime, and you haven't played him the last two years, so. Three fourths of your teams never lined up and played against Wisconsin. Right. Understands the physicality, perhaps. Just they're not ranked. They lost to Washington State. Just from a psychological standpoint, what do you have to do to impart to everybody that this is a team that can beat anybody in the country on any given day? Right. And without sounding like a, a broken record, you know, it's, it's that's what it is every week. And any team can beat you, and you can beat any team. And uh, no, you can say that once, or you can keep saying it to your blue in the face. But the guys have to listen, and they got to believe in you. And uh, we know about Wisconsin. Uh, we know the style of play. We know exactly uh, what we have to do. Uh, but that doesn't make mean it's going to happen. We got to go do it on Saturday. And this is a very good team that um, plays really hard and and uh, takes care of the football. So uh, we're going to talk to them about all those types of things and challenge them. But Again, this is not something that's just coming up right here, a 2.30 team meeting. I mean, we've been talking about this for a long time and knowing that every week it's going to be a new challenge. You know, what are these challenges? A lot of them are the same. you got to tackle well. you got to run the ball. you got to uh, stop the run. you got to um, take care of the football. you got to play well in special teams. We know all of those types of things. But then there's some things based on where your team's at, based on the opponent specifically that you got to do that week. Um, and so we'll just keep hammering those and – keep messaging the team the best we can so that we can play our best on Saturday. We haven't seen many three linebacker looks yet. Is this an opponent that likes to run the football to where, and this will be a good question for Coach Knowles here in a little bit, but is 4-3 a possibility, a little bit of it this week? Uh, yeah, you'll have to get with Jim on that, but um, you know they, they do certainly uh, you know have some different things that they like to get into that are different than uh, we do on offense, you know, multiple tight ends, and um, so you know, there'll be different plans in order to handle what they do. Uh, fourth row right, um, Cameron T. Robinson, The Athletic. Ryan, you, you talked about Gene and kind of the, the growth he's made. Yeah. Last week he was talking about how he's, he's kind of realizing the mentality of, I don't have to have a catch to have a game because he does so much. When did you see that mentality really kind of click for him? 
probably midway through preseason camp. Um, yeah, I, you know, he that approach tells you everything you need to know about his growth and where he's going. Um, and, and I'm proud of him for that. And, and, and so that's, that's got to mean something moving forward. So um, what does it mean this week? I don't know. What does it mean in two weeks? I don't know. But if he continues to work like this, good things are going to happen to him. Everything the tight ends have to do. Um, how do you evaluate them week to week? And like you said, sometimes they're picking up a blitz. They're yep. defending the D-line. Right yeah, you know, we, we do the best we can to, um, you know, grade them. Kevin does a really good job of developing tight ends, has. Um, and I think he's done a great job with this room. Um, they're, they're an intelligent group. They're a competitive group. Um, they all come from different backgrounds. It's kind of uh, it's fun to see them all together in one room. But, you know, he, he pushes them hard, drives them hard. Um, and I think you see that with their style of play. Um, but we just, just like anybody else, we have a grading system every Saturday, and we go through, and, um, you know, we have champions. And, um, you know, I think three of them graded out as a champion, so it's good. Yeah, I think uh, Kay did, uh, and I believe uh, G did, and I think Mitch did as well. Yeah. Second on the right, Bill Landis, the athletic. No? Rivals? <laughs> um, I know you don't script scramble throws, but over the course of the spring and preseason, maybe as you saw CJ excelling in some of those, did you think that you're, and saw his physical gains as well? Did you think to yourself maybe we can work some more movement throws into the offense? Because it just it just seems like you guys have done a little bit more. Of well, that. Uh, it's funny in seven on seven, uh, Jim. Uh, it's actually not seven on seven; it's eight on seven a lot of times. So he'll just he'll drop eight guys a lot, and I think a couple of practices he had nine guys in coverage during seven on seven. So uh, we can thank him for working on our scramble drills during seven on seven. But to be honest with you, we actually have spend a lot of time talking about that because, you know, when you have eight, nine guys in coverage, um, that certainly changes all the windows. And sometimes you have to hang on to the ball. Like on the second and whatever that was, it was a three-man rush that uh, CJ had. He felt the three-man rush, scrambled for seven yards. And when you're, when you're dealing with a three-man rush, drop eight, the second part of the route is huge. And he saw that and he felt that. So um, we maybe not had seen that the last couple of years. And so as we break the pocket and work the scramble drill, you know, there's just a lot of feel to that, you know, and nothing scripted. It's just like, you know, like you said, but instead of just, you know, checking the ball down sometimes or instead of just throwing the ball away, we'll actually break and contain and work that and coach that off of film and, and it's shown up on film. Um, so that's been a positive. Yeah. He said, uh, CJ said on the one he threw out of the back of the end zone, you were in the back of his head. <laughs> he didn't want to force it and get yelled at, I guess. Um, but with him, like, Sometimes he'll throw a ball in that situation, and I think some of us think to ourselves, like, boy, I, that was pretty risky. But it, when you coach that, if it's complete, is it a good throw, or do you still say, hey, I know that worked, but maybe don't do that next time? Yeah, I think it's a great question. You know, you have to decide whether it was a good decision or not. And uh, you can't look at the result if you're pro focused on the process. And that that is not just in that situation. That's for a lot of guys. You know, when you – you might be a you know offensive lineman. You don't use good technique, but maybe you get away with it on a snap because you're really talented. Is it the right technique to use, or is it just because you got away with it there? Because when you go against yourself, when it's a matchup situation, what are you going to use to have that advantage? And so we have, we look at that in all situations. Like, you know, was that a good play? You know, and you can't look at the result because sometimes the results skew, and uh, that's hard to do. Easier said than done, but it's something that our team and our coaches and our players have been challenged with, especially coming off the of last game. Uh, right next door, Doug Lamarie's, Cleveland.com. Ryan, I know you don't have, you're not in charge of this, um, <coughs> but maybe you have an opinion. Fourth home game, third night game. Great. Love all the night games. Awesome. Or does it feel like a little much? Uh, it's been good for recruiting. Um, those are long days. They, they are. Um, I, I do like when um, a noon game is done at about 4.30 and you can go home and enjoy the rest of the day. But uh, I also love seeing Buckeye Nation, 105,000 people strong. Uh, St. John's Arena was rocking. The stadium was rocking. And that was great. And the electricity of the horseshoe for a night game is nothing like it. And so um, that's the give and take, I guess. Um, I'm good. I'm excited we have a night game. I'm excited um, to see Buckeye Nation again come out and support our guys and uh, we really like to be loud in this one, you know. I was thinking about the game in 19. Um, you know, it was, that was a noon game. This is a night game. So 
Buckeye Nation's got all day to get excited and get fired up, and let's go make this the loudest it's ever been. The discussion that comes up a lot with opponents like Wisconsin about identity, right? Yeah. So from your standpoint, Ohio State, and again, it's not what we think, it's what, how opponents view you, right? What's the balance between we want to have an identity, but we also want to break tendency at time, we don't want to be too predictable. How, how do you go about balancing that? Yeah, we, we take that very seriously. I mean, we've made it very clear from uh, the offseason to the preseason to now is that, you know, we want to be tough, we want to be disciplined, and we want to be skilled, those three things. And that needs to be our identity. Um, now, on each side of the ball, we have schematic things that give us an identity as well. And, but uh, we need to be those three things. And uh, that's why I was upset a couple weeks ago with some of the penalties. But I thought we were better this week. Um, I think we've been playing tough. And then the skill of, you know, it's not just about your talent. It's about the skill of your position. It's the skill of uh, playing football and pad level and hand placement and taking care of the football and just all those types of things that you need to be a good football player. So uh, those are the identity. That should be the identity of the team. In terms of offense and defense, yeah, you need to have tendencies because good offenses and defenses and special teams have tendencies, but you also need to mix it up a little bit. And, and um and that's, that's the, the balance you try to find. You could, I've been there before. We've done tried to do too much, and we can't execute very much. I've been there before where you think, well, we'll just line up again and do the same thing, and they've been uh, getting ready for that on, on the other side of the ball, and it doesn't work. So, um, you know, you just try to find the best balance you can. Just a couple more front row. Bill Rubinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Hey, you've obviously harped on toughness all year. Um, are you at the point now where you feel confident enough about it that you're looking forward to a game like Wisconsin because you're confident in it? Or are you thinking, well, there's still some questions and this will reveal something? I think when you look at um, you know, any team, um, you know, if, if you can do it, it's just a matter of doing it every week, right? I mean, you, know, you can execute on third down. You can be disciplined. You can play with really good pad level and run the football. You can stop the run. You can do those things. The question is, can you bring it every week? And that's what it is. I think we've shown that we can do those types of things. But um, the challenge is the competitive stamina, and can we do it week in and week out? So, um, you know, this will be a very, very good team. Um, you know, it'll be the best quarterback we've seen. It'll be uh, the best running back we've seen. It'll be, um, you know, the, a lot of best we've seen so far. And certainly the first conference game will always be a challenge. A question about Luke Whipler. Um, center's got to be the leader of the line. Um, how is he in that role? Um, and just anything else you might want to say about Harry's development? Or I'm sorry, the Luke's development. Yeah, no, uh, you know, Luke uh, is um, typical of a center. Uh, he wants to, he's type A. He wants to get everything right. Uh, but he takes a lot of pride in his work and works really hard. Uh, I see him in here getting extra work, watching extra film. And that's what you want out of your center because he's the guy who's got to get everybody together. And, um, and he does a very, very good job of that. You got to be a good communicator. You got to be able to process high levels of information. You got to be able, be able to make in game adjustments. And he really feeds off of that. And he and Justin have really built a good, strong relationship. So, um, you know, because of that, you know, it's been great. Sorry, you said it's Justin. Yeah, no, I'm saying he and Justin Fry. Oh, Justin Fry. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that the two of those guys really get along well because, um, you know, they just they, they spend a lot of time together in that meeting room going through the fronts, going through the protections, going through the identifications and the adjustments. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, final question, front row right, uh, Tim May on three. Yeah, I got like a thousand. But uh, uh, following up the I formation, what impressed what has impressed me about you since you've been here is you're not just running one play out of it. Uh, you know, you were talking about well, a little bit ago with uh, Doug about the diversity and stuff. But that was, there was such a sample size there of what you guys can do out of the I. And how important is that for you not to just have a little gimmick in? But to have branches off of that limb, you yeah. understand? You sure. understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I, I think it's important that you know when you when you put something in, like you said, it can't just be one, because then what are you doing? And then are you building off of it, yeah. moving forward? And so, you want to have a package when you're putting something in, you know. And um, sometimes it, it works out really good. Sometimes it doesn't. And when it does, you build on it. And that's the idea: is that you're you're trying to build something for down the road. You're not just putting it in there and splashing it in there. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing. Uh, this pre this pre conference schedule, as you look back on it now, you've developed depth at wide receiver, playing right. depth at wide receiver in the safety room. Uh, the offensive line guys got to play a lot in the second half of the other. I'm talking backups and stuff. Yep. As you look back on it, has it been a pretty a pretty good developmental preseason 
schedule or pre-conference schedule? I mean, uh, we're in it now, but but I think in in those three games, like you said, there's been some things, some boxes that you can at least check to say, okay, now going into conference play, we at least have an idea what we're dealing with here. Um, some by necessity, some um, you know because it just worked out that way. But um, but yeah, I'm not that we have everything, all the answers right now, but but there's been some some boxes checked for sure, but still a lot more to check. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Very all right, much. guys. Thanks. thanks for